Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Can I ask you, first of all, just to introduce yourselves and tell us what brought you into fostering? What about you, Roger? Uh, well, I'm, I'm Roger. Um, and um, I think I've always thought about fostering from when I was little. I was the youngest of three, um, three boys and always fancied a younger sibling. And I uh, used to think, oh, why don't my parents um, adopt or foster? And so I, I suppose it's always been in the back of my mind, the idea of fostering. Um, and then um, uh, I started fostering with my um, ex-wife. Um, we were fostering for a while. And then um, later I, I started fostering on my own, which is quite... Um, quite unusual to be a single male foster carer. Um, a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of prejudice or some prejudice about um, uh, men fostering on their own. People think, you know, you must be a bit funny to do it or something. But, um, you know, and if, you know, people I've, uh, I've known have said, oh, I, I don't think you should be doing that. That's, that's women's work really, but uh, which I, I suppose is a form of, um, is a form of, sexism but uh, yeah I, I don't regret doing it at all no. Mm. no and what about you what if you introduce yourselves and tell us what brought you into fostering I'm Hannah and this is Chris my husband and we've been married 45 years and we back in 1989 we both read an article in the Sunday Times supplement about fostering teenagers and we read it separately and well I read it and didn't I realised that Chris had read it on an, as well, because a couple of months later we had a discussion about um, what we had read. And because by then we'd been married 13 years, we felt that we could help a teenager. So you wanted to foster teenagers? That was yeah. the plan. That yeah. was, this was the need, if you like. There was a, a countrywide need for teenagers to be cared for. Mm. Both children that could have received local authority care, but we'd had family and friends that had supported us and we'd never needed that care. So you knew, you thought you knew what it was like for some of these children? Yes. So um, we felt that we, those experiences might be able to help teenagers. It's interesting that you both read the article but didn't talk about it at the time and yet it obviously had an effect on you both and you'd been thinking about it? Well, we, we've been involved with children in many aspects for, for many years. I mean, we ran a youth club uh, which had uh, uh, at its peak about 100 over two sessions. Um, and we, we've been engaged with children. And we had a four-bedroom house. And we thought this is something that we could offer. Um, and, you know, we, whilst we did have busy lives, there was still room for something else. And so we contacted uh, the local authority, which was Hertfordshire, and uh, they quickly... Um, put us on a training course, which was, a, I think it was a weekend, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they assigned a social worker to take us through what they, what they call the F, F4, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, goes through all your lives and why, what your motivation is and why you do these things, um, f obviously for the right reasons. And, uh, and then we were approved. And um, lo and behold, uh, whilst we were approved for teenagers, our first placement was a sibling group of three, and the eldest was ten. And um, it was a, a wonderful experience, wonderful start. And um, it happened just before Christmas, and uh, someone, I think, uh, uh, had brought them fishing rods. And uh, I took them out fishing on Christmas Day uh, to the local lake, only to be accosted by the police, um, who were just checking up that we were absolutely OK and not, you know... <laughs> and he said, they won't catch any fish in there. And I said, I know. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the start. And little did we know that um, that was the start of a journey that has taken us through over 30 years and 87 children. 87. Good gracious. Yeah. I want to talk to you, both of you, or the three of you, about some of your journeys. But I also want to find out more about the process of deciding to foster because it's more than just a oh I think I'll try this and it's obviously a big 
it's a practical decision, it's an emotional decision. And I'm just wondering what, what goes through your mind when you decide to do it? What are the things you think about? What are the things you consider? I think one of the things that I... I um, and it's funny you mentioned the Form F, you know, the, which is the process. It's, it's quite a detailed process, and in some ways it's quite intrusive. But does that help you formulate how you feel about it? And oh, yes. Does it make you think about things you hadn't thought about? Yes, it does help to clarify. Um, in some ways, it, it reassures you that um, w what you're doing is, you know, for the right reasons. Because if it's not for the right reasons, then they're not. Nobody's um, trying to persuade you to become a foster carer. They're checking out whether it's what you want to do and that you actually understand what it's all about. Um, I think one of my concerns before becoming, a, actually becoming a foster carer or, or even a, approaching people to become a foster carer uh, was the idea that I would get sucked in and if I, if I felt it wasn't for me, then I'd, I'd be made to feel guilty for not doing it. But, you know, there's none of that. It's actually very, um, in a way, quite neutral to find out that it's the right thing for you and, uh, and that you understand as much as you can, you know, what, what is actually involved. Um, yeah. So you've decided twice in your life effectively to foster, once when you were married mm -hmm. and then after um, you were married to do that on your own. Yes. I'm wondering what kind of what goes through your mind, what do you feel, what do you think about when you, when you made those two separate decisions? Well, the first... The first um, when I when I was fostering with my ex-wife, um, I, I was more keen, I think, on fostering than she was. Um, Do you know why? What can you tell why? us why? I think, as I, you know, as I um, as I mentioned, I've all, it's always been in the back of my mind. Um, her, you know, her children were going off to university, and I thought, well, now's the time. We've got a, we've got spare beds, um, and it's something I'd like to do. Um, and um, and she kind of went along with it. Um, at that time, it was always assumed, although I was the I was the person who who pushed it forward. It was always assumed that she was the main foster carer because she was the woman. And um, and I'd have have people you know phone me up and say um, say oh we're talking about placement. Can I speak to your wife? And I said, well, you can talk to me. Well, I, I think we want to talk to Carol. <laughs> and so um, when she left, um, I thought, well, I'd like, actually like to do this on my own. And in fact, I moved, we'd moved county from Carmarthenshire to Ceredigion. And I thought, well, I'll start on my own clean sheet as, as, as a single male, um, and, yeah, which actually worked out better for me. And uh, yeah. Was that a difficult decision or was it just, did it feel just like a continuation of what you wanted to do? No, it wasn't a difficult decision. Um, no, I think it's something that, that I, I wanted to do. I think I'd, I'd always wanted to do it. Um, and, and that was a, um, yeah, that was the time. Um, I, mean, I think in some ways it's easier. I mean, it, easier fostering on your own uh, because you don't, um, you know, I was, I was a single parent for a while. Um, of, of my own children. Um, everything doesn't have to be done by a two-person committee. You can actually make the decisions um, and the responsibility comes on to you. But it, it, it's simpler, yeah. Mm. And what about you two? Did you, what, you obviously saw this article and thought we can, we can, we can do this, but what goes into that decision? Because it is a big decision, obviously, to open up your home to children you don't know. Right, yeah. One, have you got the bedroom? Because if you haven't got the bedroom, then you, it's not going to happen. So it's a very practical decision. Yes, <laughs> um, because I'm a practical person. And also we were looking at teenagers, so it's like I don't have to get emotionally involved in the sense of, you know... It, it doesn't work like children. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's, so you sort of have these preconceived ideas like a teenager, so they don't actually need the emotional connection. And it's like, don't believe it, it really does, they do need that connection as well. But, you know, you start off with some, some strange 
views, if you like, um, and also the, the you think you're going to be doing it alone. And the reality is actually when you through the F form, you work out that you are, will be working with schools or colleges, health, um, maybe the police. You know, it could be a, a wealth of partners that you're working with. So you're supported. Yes. It's, mm. it's very mm. much yes. a, a part of a team, isn't it? Yes. And I, and I think, again, as a single um, carer, um, you know, without the team, you couldn't do it. You know, the, it, um, you know they are very, su I don't know if they're more supportive for me as a single carer than they are for a couple, but I do, uh, you know, they're, they're the people who are at the end of the phone for advice. Um, if you say, I don't know what to do in this situation, you know, basically hand them out you know, and tell me what to do. You know, and uh, and they, they're, they're trained, they're intelligent. They don't know the child as well as you know the child, but they've got a broad, um, not only the education, but broad experience. And, um, and, you know, by and large, the advice they give is very, very, it's very helpful. It's very down to earth, you know, it's uh, useful, yeah. Sorry, Anne, I interrupted you. I reflected uh, a lot during the initial process of my childhood and the people that had supported uh, myself and my four other siblings. Um, when my father was uh, taken away at a very early age for me, the age of eight, and um, left my mother at home with five children. I remember um, all the people that had supported us um, over that period, and I felt that you know I needed to do something and give something back um, because we we felt we had something to offer, and um, our childhood whilst. Um, we had, there were many issues. Um, we were always loved and supported um, by people outside of the family. Um, so did you did you feel that gave you a, a better insight into perhaps what the children coming to you would need? I think that it helped us be a little bit more empathic um, to their situation. And when children come into care, most of them it is a, a very traumatic experience for them. And you have to really, I mean, every child is different, as you know, and they all need different care. And, uh, but I think it, was, it made us think a little bit more about their situation and trying to make their situation the best that we possibly could. I mean, people often say to, to us, those you're so, those children, they're just so lucky to have you as foster carers. We actually think the opposite. We actually think that it's the children, uh, that we benefit from the children more than they benefit from us and the experiences they've given. Not always great. Not everything always works out. But over uh, the years, um, we have enjoyed all the experiences um, that we've had. You were agreeing with that, Roger? Yes, and, and you know, I'm, I'm 71 now, and, um, and I'm learning, you know, and you know, there's a huge learning curve, and, and I, enjoy, I enjoy that. Um, but it's interesting you saying, you know, um, saying about all the children you have um, are, are having a rough time before they come to you, even if it's, you know, they're coming to you for a reason, and the reason isn't going to be um, a nice one. It, 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 they're not going to be having a, a good time. And I think, you know, as you, Chris, I, I, um, I had, uh, you know, I didn't have a happy childhood. And, uh, and I actually uh, feel um, I'd like to actually help children who aren't having a happy childhood, you know. It's, uh, you know, th there is that empathy, um, you know, for them, and yeah.